So let's play and let's uh, get back into our study on the subject of pig in pig development. We thank you that uh, you are leading us, guiding us to God, and thank you for your powerful word, Father God, that uh, illuminates our minds and uh, Father helps us, to God, see things in our perspective, not as we spend time learning about faith, let faith arise in our hearts. Uh, and Lord, help us, Lord, help us to uh, continue, Father God, to walk and do the impossible uh, through the faith that you give us. In Jesus' name we pray. So we've been learning about faith, and we saw that uh, even though God is able to do many things, He expects faith on man's part. And without faith, um, there are there are things that can be stopped. We saw that. So sovereignty of God, where God can do everything, but God's choosing to depend on faith. And so the importance of faith, how faith is such an essential um, part of the Christian life. And for all of us, you know, and we need to settle this in our minds. If we have to relate with God, we can only relate to faith. If there is no faith, there's no question of uh, understanding his word or applying his word because there's no faith at all. So faith is very important. Without faith, we are not believing, right? Uh, the main thing is believing. So you and I, we can read this Bible. We go to church. We can do all the Christian activities. What if we engage in all those things minus faith? Is it, is it the way God has uh, designed for us to walk with him? No. In all that we do, there's got to be faith. If there's no faith, there's actually no point. We are just going to the motions. We are just going to the activities. And it does not. So faith is needed. We relate to God. Yes. Excuse me. So today, Excuse me, please. Let's look at Jesus. Hello. And, uh, how did Jesus Hello. minister to his people please? on the basis of their Your audio is not clear. Um, Excuse me, I please, your audio. Is uh, uh, I'm assuming the same as an echo. Let me quickly check the settings again. Any better? Please let me know. Is my voice clear now? Not yet. It's clear? No, Um, what about the we, we can't we can't hear you clearly. Okay, uh, are you all able to hear me now? Yes, we can hear you clearly now. Okay, great. All right, it's better for them. So it's it's good. Yeah, thank you. Uh, and there is a question here on the chat section regarding some of the scriptures. 
from the previous class. So from the previous class, you can go back and review the video of the previous class. Um, and yeah, you should be able to get your answer to that. OK, so let's proceed. I'm uh, going to share my screen with the online students. So we were saying that faith is important for us to relate with God. Uh, and even though God is sovereign, he expects us to have faith. Now, in the ministry of Jesus, how did he talk about faith or how did he minister to people who had faith? That is what we are going to look at. We are going to look at the ministry of Jesus today and how he healed, how he set people free, how he... Um, released a miracle in a difficult situation and all of that and how that is based on faith that people carried. So there are 11 points in the third chapter here. We'll see how much we can cover. Uh, I'll try my best to do maximum. Uh, but even if we don't, we will cover the remaining in the next class. So we are saying that Jesus recognized and responded to faith in those who came to him. So that's something we will look at. Uh, I'm just reading out the list from page number 26. So those of us who are here, you can look at it. The first one is Jesus recognized and responded to faith in those who came to him. Jesus asked people if they had faith in order to receive. Jesus encouraged faith in hopeless situations. Jesus encouraged people to act their faith. Jesus demonstrated that faith could affect nature. Jesus accommodated people outside of God's agenda in response to faith. Jesus helped people when they struggled in faith. There were times when Jesus healed and worked miracles independent of the individual's faith. People came in faith on behalf of others and received for them. Jesus rebuked his disciples for being of little faith. Unbelief limited Jesus from doing mighty works. So these are all the different aspects that we are going to look at in the ministry of Jesus. So let's begin with the first one here where... We said that Jesus responded to people's faith. So there are some examples given in our notes, and you can follow along with me. There was a Roman centurion who came to Jesus. Now we all know his servant was unwell, and he could not bring his servant to Jesus. So he came to Jesus, and he said, my servant is tormented. Uh, and uh, Jesus, I know that you can heal him. So Jesus was ready to go to the centurion's house. Uh, but what did the centurion say? He said, look, I am a commander over soldiers. When I say something, they do it. So I believe in the authority of your word. Jesus, you only say a word like you just say, and my servant will be healed. Now, when the Roman centurion said this, Jesus' response in verse 10, Matthew 8, verse 10, he marveled, meaning he was amazed. You remember we looked at um, Hebrews 11, 6, faith pleases God. So here is a man who's saying, Jesus, don't even come to my house. You say a word because he understood about authority, authority through the word. So if Jesus says a word the authority of God will be released and his servant will be healed. That was his faith. So Jesus heard this and he marveled like, wow, here's a person who believes in my word like that, like one word and that word will do the work. So Jesus marveled. And what did he say? He said, assuredly, I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. I've not found such faith. So again, that tells us that Jesus is looking for faith. What is he looking for? What is it that can impress Jesus? 
faith. Yeah. So if he finds faith and he found unusual faith in this man, he said, I've not found it anywhere else. Um, but this is, he calls it great faith. Great faith. Think about this. Can Jesus ever tell us that I found great faith in you? To each of us, if he can say, wow, I have not found this kind of faith in all of Bangalore. What great faith. But that's how he spoke to the centurion because of the faith that he had in the word of God and the authority of the word. The word carries authority. And we know what happened in that situation. Immediately the servant was healed. Think about this distance in terms of a miracle. He's far away. He's not with Jesus. Jesus did not go to centurion's house. But servant is healed. Distance is not a problem for Jesus. The centurion believed. If Jesus can say a word from here, servant in my house will be healed. And it took place. So Jesus is acting on the basis of faith. Now if the centurion came and he did not have faith, miracle would not have happened. All right. That's what we are saying. If there is faith, things happen. If there is no faith, nothing happens. And God is looking for faith. Thank God he found great faith in the heart of the centurion. So the other example here is that of a paralytic man. There was a paralytic man lying on a bed. And scripture says in Matthew 9 verse 2, when Jesus saw their faith. So this man was brought by his friends. And uh, we know that they lowered him through the roof. Jesus was preaching in a place and this man was paralytic. Now we don't know the context, like why did they make a you know a hole through the roof and bring him down? Their roofs were different. You know, we, we can't really do that today. But in that context, it worked. They were able to low, lower this man before Jesus. And when he saw that they had incredible faith, that they brought him to Jesus, he healed him. He said to the paralytic, be of good cheer, your sins are forgiven you. And later on, he also heals him. And he actually gets up. Uh, he, he's able to go on. So how did this paralytic man get healed? On the basis of faith. Faith also. But faith of others. Faith of others. Uh, we don't see any comment on his faith, but it's likely that he also had faith. Who knows? He may also have said, okay, take me to Jesus. Jesus can heal me. The important part is there is faith in this situation. That's why he was able to receive his healing. Um, the next example is a woman, a Canaanite woman who comes to Jesus in Matthew 15. Her child, um, her, her daughter is oppressed by demons. And she comes and she says, you know, Jesus, deliver my child. And Jesus says, we can't give the bread of the children to the dogs. Think about this. How would you and I feel if Jesus said that to us? Like, it's not available for you. This miracle is not available for you. But she had great faith. She says, Jesus, even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the, uh, you know, from the table. So what she's saying is, I believe. Even if you give me a little bit, my child will be delivered. I know that. So when she makes that comment, based on her faith, Jesus says in verse 28, O oh woman, great is your faith. Great is your faith. Let it be to you as you desire. So on the basis of her faith, her child was delivered. And the scripture says her daughter was healed that very hour, instant, immediate deliverance took place because of this woman's faith. So in all these three cases, we are just looking at three examples, but many examples are there where Jesus acted because there was faith. He was impressed by the faith and he did the miracle. So what does that tell us? It tells us 
that Jesus will do his miracles based on the faith that we carry. What is the faith that we carry in him? You know, that, okay, you know, God has a good future for me. God is equipping me. Maybe we are going through some challenging situations in our personal life, in our health, or in our home. Uh, but we have faith. God, you're going to bring me out. You will give us the wisdom. You, know, you will do a breakthrough. There will be a miracle. Our faith is in the fact that Jesus will work. He will do. His word will deliver us. Then what happens? Those things happen. Those things happen. But when we are just going on, like, it may happen, it may not happen. I don't know whether God can, cannot, whether he will, he won't. That's not faith. Faith says, my God will do. I know. I put my trust in him. He will work in my life, in my future, in my family, in my circumstance. So that is faith. When we have faith, what are we seeing? Jesus is working. We want God to work. He worked on the basis of faith. And so we can develop our faith. And then we can see God at work in our lives. So that is um, something regarding Jesus ministering to those who had faith. Now, Jesus asked people if they had faith in order to receive. So this is also very interesting. It very clearly shows that he's looking for faith. Only if there is faith will there be a miracle. If there is no faith, there will be no miracle. So there are two blind men. They come to Jesus and uh, you know they want Jesus to heal them. And Jesus asks them, in Matthew 9, verse 28, do you believe that I am able to do this? And they answered, yes, Lord, we believe. Because they believed, because they had faith, he goes on, he touches their eyes, and then he says, according to your faith, let it be to you. So they believed that Jesus could do it. They got what they believed. But Jesus checked. Do you believe? He's asking. Do you believe? So we go to Jesus with our requests. And Jesus is saying, okay, I heard your request, but do you believe that I can do this for you? Like those blind men, hopefully we are in a place where we say, yes, Lord. And then we see God move and God work a miracle. So he's asking a question. They are blind men, right? Jesus also knows they are blind. He knows they're expecting healing. Then why is he asking? Why is he asking? Do you believe? He's a God of compassion. He can heal them immediately. But still he's asking, do you believe? He wants to do, but he also wants to see faith. So when we can say to God, yes, Lord, I believe. I believe. Then God does the miracle. There's another example of a man whose son was demon-possessed. So they're struggling, you know, the child is being tormented. But Jesus asks this man also the same question. Do you believe? Do you believe that I can deliver your son? He says, yes, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. So very honest person. He's saying, look, there's a mixture here. I believe also and I'm struggling also. But even then, Jesus goes ahead and does the miracle. How much faith do we need? Mustard seed. In other words, even if we have a little bit of faith, we can move mountains. That's what Jesus taught us. So though he was struggling, he had faith. And on the basis of that faith, Jesus went ahead and delivered the son. So what is the point of our discussion right now? Jesus was checking for faith so that, you know, he is able to release the miracles or do the works in people's lives. So he's looking for, uh, looking for faith. Even when we say, God, we want this done or we want this to happen, he's asking, do you believe? Show me, show me your faith. Do you really believe that I can do this? So faith is important. The third section even in a hopeless situation, hopeless situation. What are hopeless situations? 
Yeah. Okay, death. All right, death. Yeah, that's pretty tough. Hmm? What What other hopeless situations can we think of? Yeah, sickness. Maybe extremely sick. Somebody is very sick, or um, um, you know, debt. Uh, we have to pay the bills and we can't pay the bills. It's hopeless situation. Or um, what else? Exams. We wrote the exams. We didn't clear it. Each one of us, we experience hopelessness in various situations. So in a hopeless situation, it's as if nothing good can come out of it. It's the end now. The end. What can God do at the end of the rope? So that's the question we are asking. There are two people in scripture who found themselves um, or two instances where there was hopelessness. First is there's a man by the name of Jairus. And what happened to him? He His daughter was very sick and he went to meet Jesus. Mark chapter 5. If we read the entire chapter, Jesus is doing miracles and you know many things are happening and Jairus is there. He's waiting. When will my turn come? I want to tell the master and I, I want the master to heal my daughter. So while he's still waiting for Jesus to respond, somebody comes to him from his house and they say, your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? Quite hopeless, right? He thought Jesus will heal his daughter. But what has happened now? Daughter is dead. What to do? I, I can't even imagine what he was going through at that point. He was standing there in front of Jesus. And uh, maybe he was speechless. But look at what Jesus said in verse 36. Jesus heard. He must have heard what, uh, what was being spoken to this man, Jairus. And he's saying, do not be afraid, only believe. So he realized that Jairus' faith is going down. If there's a graph, it's coming down. Daughter is dead. Story is over. But Jesus still looks at him and says, your hopeless situation is not my hopeless situation. You may look at this as uh, hopeless. There is no hope. I am the God of hope. You know, in, in the book of Ro uh, Romans, there's a scripture that says he's the God of all hope. God of all hope. So if he's the God of all hope, can he ever be hopeless? No way. He's full of hope. Full of hope. So he just looks at Jairus and he says, do not be afraid. Only believe. So what is he trying to say? Let your faith not die. Keep your faith. Don't lose it. Don't let it go. Believe. I know it's difficult at this point. Your daughter is dead, but I'm telling you, don't be afraid. Only believe. And we know what happened. On the basis of his encouragement, his word, his promise to Jairus, the daughter comes back to life. That's why Jesus is telling him, look, I'm going to do a miracle, but you've got to believe. So there are times when we may hit that point of discouragement. But what do we see Jesus do? In a hopeless situation, he's still encouraging and he's saying, look, don't worry. Don't be afraid. Only believe. Only believe. So we need to tell ourselves, don't be afraid. Only believe. Jesus is still with us. Jesus still cares. He still loves me. So I'm not going to be afraid. I will only believe. So in a hopeless situation, there was a miracle because Jesus encouraged faith. So if we saw the graph going down like that, when Jesus spoke to him, suddenly it would have started going up, saying, oh, Jesus is saying, great, he's going to help me out. Okay. So uh, that was Jairus' situation. Think about Lazarus. Luke chapter 11. Lazarus is dead. Uh, it's already delayed. Three days he's in the tomb. Then Jesus goes there. 
and uh, he commands the stone to be removed john chapter 11 verses 39 to 40 so martha tells jesus as if jesus does not know okay she tells jesus lord by this time there is a stench for he has been dead four days so four days by now he was already dead so she's giving him a status report as to how the facts show us that nothing is possible it's four days the man is the body is um you know like stinking think about this jesus's faith was not shaken he did not at that point he didn't say oh really is that the report oh sorry you know wrong timing i came at the wrong time i can't do anything because the situation is like that. But Jesus tells Martha. What does he tell Martha? Verse 40. Did I not say to you that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God? I don't even know how that scene was. Did he say that strictly? Did he say that like he was scolding her? Or did he say that as if he was comforting her? We don't know the tone of voice. But he said, your report, I agree with you. You know, the building has fallen, there is no money, there is no, uh, you know, options, the road is closed, the doors are closed. Your report is true. I agree with you. You know, years are wasted. It's too complicated. We tell Jesus many things. This is the report, Lord, status report. But he is looking at Martha, who gave him that report. He's God. He already knows. I already know. How hopeless the situation is. But he looks her, looks at her, maybe in the eye, and he said, Did I not say to you that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God? The situation is terrible. But did I not say to you, have you forgotten, Martha? Have you forgotten? If you believe, I told you, if you believe, you will see the glory of God. So in a hopeless situation, he's encouraging. He encouraged Jairus, don't be afraid. Only believe. Did I not say to you, right? if you believe, you will see the glory of God. And then what happened? We all know. Lazarus came out. Dead man came back to life. The impossible happened. But before the impossible to happen, what is required? What is needed? Faith. Faith is needed. Believe. He's asking the action from us. You believe. If you believe, I'll do the miracle. So even during impossible times, we see that he was encouraging the people and saying, your hopelessness is not my hopelessness. If you believe, you will see what I can do. So that's how he worked. That's how he functioned. The fourth one here. Jesus encouraged people to act their faith. So there are two examples given in our notes here. One is about the 10 lepers. Lepers who came to Jesus in Luke 17. They came and, um, you know, uh, they cried out to him. They said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he told them, go show yourselves to the priests. And so it was that as they went they were cleansed luke 17 verse 14 so he tells them to do something you go show yourself to the priest because according to the law which they had under the old covenant lepers would need to do that when they are cleansed so he's giving them an instruction look at this instead of healing them and for them experiencing the miracle then and there he told them to do something okay uh, and as they were doing it the healing came so what does that mean sometimes jesus will say you do this take up your bed and walk the paralyzed man could have said jesus are you sure i'm paralyzed i can't walk and forget about taking up my bed but thank God these people did it. So when we hear an instruction from God, 
when god is saying something and we start doing it the miracle will come when we are in that act or when we engage in action so if we don't act then what happens if the if the lepers 10 lepers are there he told them go show yourself to the priest now imagine they didn't go it won't happen see because they are not acting on the basis of their faith but when we act on the basis of our faith like abraham go he just started going but thank god he started if he didn't start then the miracle will not come if god says something as an instruction like do sometimes we do that even in church if um you know we call out a word of knowledge and we tell the people stretch your hand and see or um a stand up and see move move the leg and see when people are acting on their faith the healing will come so there is a need for action and that's what happened in this case jesus told the lepers you go go to the high priest as they were going verse 14 it says as they went they were cleansed so we have to take action then we will experience the miracle similarly there was a man who came to jesus and uh, told him you know uh, come before my child dies and jesus told him you go your way your son lives he believed the word and as he went the son was healed this is in john chapter 4 so people heard jesus and they acted on it there was another man blind man john 9 verse 6 to 7 do you remember um jesus made a um, paste out of the mud and saliva and put it on that man's eyes and said go wash in the pool of uh, siloam when he went and washed it he could see each time the way god works is different we can't expect see for the centurion he said a word um and in this case he did something so god has his own way of working we can't expect the same pattern but as long as we are believing the miracle takes place so god gave them some action to do so same thing in our lives god may say you know maybe some of us we are feeling very depressed we are feeling very sad we feel like i don't want to do anything um nothing is working out for me the way i desire so what do we choose to do do nothing do nothing just you know watch tv netflix waste time uh and uh, sleep sleep away i don't want to do anything why should i do anything but Jesus says no i have a bright future for you come on get up you do what i'm calling you to do today it may seem dark but as you take the step something wonderful will work out so as a believer what should i do just take those small steps as jesus instructs you for everyone it may be different you know it may be okay go talk to a counselor or you know go talk to your parents or something like that or maybe just get up go study or go for a walk go exercise something take action as we take action it will come the miracle will come the healing will come the the uh, fulfillment will come the manifestation will come so the instruction is not without authority we need to act on it and that's something jesus did and jesus encouraged people to take action and miracles happen now jesus also demonstrated that faith could affect nature when does this happen any examples in jesus ministry like in nature were the things that changed because of jesus instruction ha huh? fig tree correct mark 11 he curses the fig tree then next day when uh, he's coming with the disciples the disciples tell jesus hey jesus look you cursed and it's dried up so something happened to a plant or a tree on the basis of the authority of god's word and another one is the storm 
there was a storm and Jesus was in the boat. He looks at the storm and he rebukes the storm. It's natural. But natural elements also heard or they obeyed the voice of God. So that is something that Jesus could do. But in both of these instances, what is the lesson about faith that we are learning? In Mark 11, if you recall, when we started the course on faith, I told us, don't forget this verse, Mark 11, verse 22. Have you forgotten? OK, what does that verse say? You can look it up. Have faith in God. So the cursing of the fig tree, it was actually a lesson for the disciples. Jesus as a teacher, what do teachers do? They want to teach not just by explanation, but also by action. So that was a teachable moment for Jesus. He cursed the fig tree the next day. The disciples observed that, hey, what Jesus is saying is correct. There is authority in our words. And then he goes on to teaching them, you know, uh, verse 23 onwards, if you have faith like a mustard seed and you speak to the mountain, so like a typical teacher, he just demonstrated it. He spoke to the fig tree. Fig tree is dry. Now he tells them, if you have a little bit of faith, you speak to the mountain, mountain will be removed. Okay, mountain can even be uprooted and cast into the sea. So he was teaching a lesson about faith in Mark chapter 11. And when it came to Luke 8, what all of us said, there was a storm and Jesus calmed the storm. What is it about faith that we can understand in that passage? Jesus was sleeping on the boat. And what was the reaction of the disciples? Storm. There's a storm. So what is the response of the disciples? Yeah, Jesus, we are dying. Where, where are you? How can you sleep? We are perishing, master. He got up. He went and he rebuked the storm, the raging water. Everything became calm. And then Jesus comes to them, verse 25. Okay, this is again, if we can recreate it in drama or, you know, like a scene in a movie. I wonder how that will be. The boat is shaking. There's a storm. Jesus is happily sleeping. How can you sleep? In the storm, but he's sleeping. Disciples come. Master, we are dying. We are perishing. He calmly just gets up. First thing, he goes, rebukes the storm. Everything is calm. Now he comes back. He's looking at all his disciples. Disciples are shocked. What just happened? You know, everything calmed down. He's looking at his disciples and the scripture says, he asked them one question. Where is your faith? Okay. <laughs> Feels like a nice, you know, like, oh gosh. Jesus is asking, where is your faith? It's a rebuke. It's a rebuke. So what does that tell us? It tells us that Jesus was expecting his disciples to have faith in a difficult situation. That's why the obvious question, it's, it's, it's a tough situation, I understand. But how come you guys are so weak in your faith? Why are you so scared? Why are you saying I'm going to die? He comes to them and he says, I didn't expect this from you. Where is your faith? You know, you kept it in the cupboard or put it in your pocket. Where is that faith that you need to have? So it's a rebuke. He's shocked. He's like, oh, my disciples, I'm training them. Look at them. They should have stood up and rebuked the storm. Think about this. Maybe if, you know, Peter or John, Peter generally quickly, he does stuff, right? So who knows if Peter just stood up and he looked at the storm and he tried, okay, be calm, be still, he, something. But even Peter didn't do that. Nobody did anything. Which is why Jesus was quite shocked 
and he's saying, my disciples, you've seen how I am. You've seen how I have managed things. I operate by faith. You're in a situation that requires faith. I can't believe you came to me and said, we are dying, we are dying, Jesus. Where is your faith? Where is your faith? So Jesus is expecting us as his disciples to have faith, even if it has to do with nature. In both these situations, fig tree, storm, what is it? Nature, right? So we can exercise our authority on nature as well. All right, so now let me quickly go here to our chat section. Seems like there are some questions that um, have not answered, so we shall take it up. Okay, John says, when doctors give up on sickness of an individual, okay, maybe you were sharing about hopelessness. Yeah, that's a hopeless situation. Uh, Sister Shanti, you want to say something? Please go ahead, unmute and uh, speak. And after that, if uh, Vijaya wants to speak also, you can. So, Yeah, Shanti, uh, please unmute and speak. We can't hear you. Okay, not sure if that was by mistake. Uh, but any comments, any thoughts at this point? Maybe we'll just stop here. We've covered five points so far, and we'll pick up the sixth in the next class. But any comments? Anything to discuss? So what we could do is we could read through the entire chapter, the scriptures and all, and just meditate on it. And uh, let's come back in the next class and continue to look at the ministry of Jesus and the importance of faith in his ministry. Okay, so we will, if there's nothing to ask, we can wrap up right away. Yes, yes, Divya. Yes. <laughs> okay, so you're saying sometimes God does the work sovereignly, um, which does not involve our faith. So, and we don't want it. Yeah, but. Yeah, so, okay. Uh, see, I think we'll have to rest in the understanding that God is omniscient. Omniscient meaning all-knowing. He knows. He knows what's coming and, you know, what is good for us. So, thank God he's sovereign in some situations. It's like a parent. If you ask a, you know, four-year-old or a five-year-old, they may come to the parent and question, why did you put me in school? You didn't ask me. I, I don't want to go to school. Did you take my permission? What do parents usually do? They, they'll be like, you be quiet. We know what we are doing. Like sovereignty. We've got to do this for you right now. You cannot understand. But it's the goodness of the parents. It's very similar. There are When we look at the sovereignty of God, it's part of his nature. He doesn't do anything which is harmful or destructive. He just cannot. Jesus said, John 10, 10, I've come that you may have life and have it in abundance. So in certain situations, if God does something sovereignly, we can rest on the truth that he's good. He knows best. And uh, whatever he's doing is for a good life for you and me. Yeah, I hope that helps.
Yes, uh, Anthony, I see your hand raised. Did you want to ask a question? Yeah. Ma'am, what does Ecclesiastes 7, 16 mean? Uh, not able to hear you very clearly, Anthony. Could you just repeat? Yeah, ma'am. What does Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 16 mean? Do, do not be too righteous, neither be overly wise. Why should you destroy yourself? What does it mean? Uh, yes, about Ecclesiastes chapter 17, verse 1. Yeah, Ashiraj, I'll, I'll quickly come to you. I think uh, Anthony wanted to say something and we were... Yeah, the same thing is what I'm uh, asking you. Know. I was asking. just repeating it to you. Yeah. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 16. Maybe, Shiraj, you could uh, say that to us because Anthony's volume is very low. Yeah, Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 1. 16, 16. Verse 16. Yes. You just have a question about the uh, scripture, what the scripture talks about. Uh, which Which scripture? Uh, Ecclesiastics. Okay, Ecclesiastics. Chapter 7. 7. Uh, verse 16. 16, oh, okay. I'll look at it. Um, Ecclesiastes 7 and verse 16. Do not yes. be overly... Is that the one? Yes, yes, ma'am. Okay, fine. Um, so maybe he's asking, why is there a scripture like that? You see, uh, the Bible is very honest. And uh, the writings of men have been included in it. So when we read about David, you know, the mistakes he made and the way he thought, it need not be correct. It need not be correct, the attitude or the way he thought. But it is included in the Psalms. So it's very similar. Ecclesiastes 7, 16 is very similar. So we shouldn't go by what it's saying. Uh, but understand that as, um, uh, as you know, that individual's process of thinking. I hope that helps, Sriraj. Yeah, okay, that's right. Okay, great. Shiraj and Anthony are happy with that. So let's uh, close with a word of prayer. And I want uh, somebody here in the class to lead in prayer, please. No mics. Thank you, Lord, Father, for this wonderful day. Thank you, Lord, Father, for this wonderful class, Lord. Lord, we ask for wisdom and knowledge to understand your word. And Lord, please help us to apply this word into our life. Lord, as we learned about faith, Lord, I pray that uh, give us wisdom so we can learn your word and we can strong our faith, Lord. And we can ask everything to you by faith, Lord. And we can heal, we can do things by faith, Lord. And Lord, thank you for everything. And thank you for this day. In Jesus' name, I say amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Uh, we'll continue on this subject on Friday. Okay, see you all then. God bless.